Welcome everyone. This is a video showing the wattage or you know power consumption uh, of the devices I showed in my last video with Tesla's power transfer. Uh, I figure it's important that we know what these devices would consume normally, how much power it takes for them to operate in a normal setting, and then. Um, it makes it a little bit more accurate when trying to evaluate uh, the efficiency using Tesla's power transfer. So we've got a watt meter here, uh, which I'll try and make sure is visible. And we have, I've set up the first light is the um, incandescent bulb. So we'll plug that on, plug that in and uh, so there's the light. Now that will reach uh, 186 degrees according to my infrared thermometer. And we'll block that light so we can see this properly. And uh, that's consuming 20 watts. Uh, I do believe that this is rated at a um, 21 watt bulb. So that's, that's pretty normal for that. So we got that one and then we'll swap over to the LED so we got this larger LED which we operated on the uh, Tesla power transfer so that's now running and I'll just hold those two there uh, this one's consuming six watts um, I believed when powered up uh, on the transfer system that it was showing a different wattage there so that's something to be investigated uh, appears at full brightness um, so yeah six watts for that one which is, you know, why obviously why it runs longer. There's a lot less power consumption for that one. And let's plug the car 12 volt LED light. And that's coming in at 12 watts. So there's a lot to be said about this Tesla power transfer because if you refer back to my last video, you'll see that um, the runtime on this particular light is a lot longer than this light, uh, the LED one there, even though um, this light consumes more power, uh, sorry, consumes less power. So this is where it's important to realize this balanced load situation does not necessarily mean uh, just because the item draws less current that that's a balanced item and I'm starting to realize that balanced in in this Tesla power transfer uh, has nothing to do with the wattage so um, there may be um, resistance playing a part there um, and the other thing I was considering last night is quite possibly uh, the fact that um, these different uh, devices uh, produce different amounts of heat or stated differently waste different amounts of heat uh, waste different amounts of energy as heat they tr transform it so this incandescent bulb uh, being able to get up to 186 degrees Celsius suggests that a large component of that energy has been transferred to heat. So we're losing some efficiencies there. So finding the perfect device might be more about that you're know, finding that balance, not so much um, you know the greater output. Um, if you want, if run times are your major concern with with the Tesla power transfer setup, then um, 
it is a case of going through multiple loads until we find one that uh, wow okay I've not connected that to the meter before but that just does not like it so that might suggest that the meter is uh, feeding back uh, I don't know I hope I haven't wrecked that just then okay so is it possible that that was um, transferring power back to the battery? I'm not sure. Let's try it again. Okay, that time it didn't do it. So, I don't know. Um, that's claiming that it's pulling 4 watts. I'm not really sure what happened there with that meter going haywire like that. Yeah, okay, so 4 watts. So, I hope that was clear. Um, that will allow people to do their own calculations and and um, you know, decide whether you can find a, uh, a suitable load or a balanced load to use with Tesla's power transfer. Alright, thanks very much for watching. Have a nice day.